Hi ladies. This is Gail and uh, Ruth Ann and I got to talking about maybe some ways that we could be an encouragement to you through the Sisters in Service Facebook page and uh, so we come up with this idea. Ruth Ann's going to do a couple of uh, live videos or videos each week on family and homeschooling and ideas with your kids while they're home and while we're all kind of stuck in the house. And my kids are gone, yay! <laughs> but I still have Tom here. But anyway, uh, I'm going to do some things on mental health because this is a place where these types times can really cause us to have a lot of trouble with our thoughts and anxiety and different things like that, depression and stuff. So I'm going to kind of focus on those kind of things and we're going to kind of see how it goes. Uh, you're welcome to share them if you know how to share them. Ruth Ann and I are kind of struggling there a little bit. But anyway, we're going to try to be a blessing to you for the next three or four weeks and just see how the Lord uses it. So today I thought we'd talk a bit about anxiety. I think we're all experiencing a certain level of anxiety anywhere, anyway with the knowledge of the current situation. And there can be lots of different types of anxiety though, not just this one. There can be anxiety just because the kids are all home, right? That brings a certain anxiety because now there's more housework to do and all kinds of noise and people to entertain and people to keep from fighting, all the wonderful things that happen inside a family. And the other thing is that the hubby's home 24-7, which, you know, most of us as missionaries are used to having our husband around quite often, but honestly, um, to have your husband home 24-7 if you've never done that before, that's a certain amount of uh, anxiety all of its own with two adults in the house because there's a natural challenge there to who actually is supposed to be the leader here now. Um, you can go back to scripture where it says, you know, the woman should lead the home, but I probably think that might be a bit of a, hmm, poor choice. <laughs> Anyway, there could be other types of anxiety that's going to come along with the things that we're facing right now. The fear of losing a job, the fear of being able to pay their, our bills, even the fear of contracting the virus itself can make uh, a level of anxiety in our hearts. But you know what? Anxiety is just that, just that word. You probably missed it. It's the word fear. That's exactly what anxiety really is. It's that fear of the unknown. It's that dread of the future. It's the inability to control our life, or for some people, it's just that nagging feeling that something not good is going to happen, and they wait for that every day, and so their life is full of anxiety as they wait to see what wrong thing can possibly happen. Many people uh, experience anxiety, but some people are just better at hiding it than others. So today we're going to look at some ways that people try to hide their anxiety and then we're going to look at the truth of God's Word and look for the peace that He can give us. So let's pray for just a moment. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank You for Your Word. We thank You for the truth that is there for us to find. Lord, we thank You that You love us, You know where we are, You never leave us nor forsake us, never any moment that You're away from us. Help us to rely upon You during this time. And Lord, as we look into Your Word, Lord, let it be a blessing to our heart, we ask. In Christ's name, amen. So, one way people try to hide their anxiety is to do everything in their power to not let anyone know that they feel anxious. They think that if they show any kind of weakness in their life, that it's going to have some negative consequences, and that they want to then just hide the truth of what they're experiencing because they just can't face other people knowing that they're struggling. Sometimes I think that just comes down to fear. We're afraid that people will judge us, afraid that they won't think us um, qualified or able, you know, to be to help them if they, if they see out, if if we show our weaknesses, they're going to think that we're too weak to help them. It's a lot of still based in fear. So what is the real truth of the matter? Well, the truth is that we all struggle. You know, when you read your Bible, virtually every Bible character had some kind of negatives. The Lord Jesus Christ had none, but he experienced anxiety as he came to Gethsemane, and he prayed with drops of blood as he prepared to face the cross. So anxiety is a real thing that God knows about it, and he isn't afraid in his word to share with us and to share with people uh, the truth of what's going on there. And you know, we draw a lot of strength from the Bible characters, don't we? The humanity that they show. So why would we believe that that our own weaknesses would not be used to encourage someone else. You know, apprehension in the face of hard times is absolutely normal. 
we have no reason for us to deny the fact that we're anxious or concerned. And we needn't be afraid to let our children see that, to know that we recognize the danger that's there. Because if we just blow it off or try to hide, then we're sending a confusing message. And we aren't teaching our children how to face difficulties, face adversity, and we're teaching them really to hide. And it's not good for us, it's not good for them. And maybe this is a time God's brought about in our life or a time when we need to learn more about how to handle adversity. And so we can come out stronger on the other side. Another way people try to get rid of their anxiety is just to try to suppress it, just to deny it that they've even got it, just hold on to it. Well, you know, that's just not a good thing. It's not a good thing because it produces things in our life. It produces physical effects, heart problems and high blood pressure and uh, the hives, as we call it in, in America, the, the rash that comes out, stuttering. All kinds of different things come from holding back the emotions that are inside, the feelings. And it causes us to funnel a lot of energy into making the problem actually larger and more real than it really is. Because all we're doing is focusing on that problem. We might think we're suppressing it, but no, we aren't really. We're really focusing on it. And you know, we can take that thing to the Lord in prayer. The Lord's not afraid for you to cry to Him, to complain, to lay out your problems before Him and let those emotions just flow because He already knows your thoughts. He knows every thought you think before you even think it and every word you're going to say. So we cannot hide. Suppressing our emotions or hiding or denying are not healthy ways of dealing with anxiety. The real battle in anxiety is in our mind. It's that battle of competing thoughts. On one hand, there might be a genuine concern like this virus. But on the other hand, we know that we're not supposed to be worrying. We're not supposed to be fretting. So there comes this battle, this constant, I shouldn't be doing this. Oh, but I'm concerned. I shouldn't do this. But oh, but I'm concerned. And back and forth, our mind goes. And that inner talk just gets louder and louder and louder until we lose all of our peace and security. And our uncontrolled, fearful mind just takes over. And all of a sudden, we find ourselves breaking down. Mommy's having a, having a panic attack. Mommy can't handle it. Pastor's wife can't handle it. You know, this kind of thing comes along because we have allowed it to grow in that way. And we've just lost that battle momentarily. And it is momentarily because the Lord will always renew us. So how do we deal with it? Well, we need to learn some self-control and we need to learn some critical thinking skills. So God's Word is full of instruction here. The Bible is full of these things, isn't it? Think with me to all the verses that you already know about be not dismayed, be not afraid, let not your heart be troubled, trust in the Lord with all your heart, right? You know all these verses. They're there. But don't forget in these times, they are real. They are real. God's Word is real. The promises for them there are real for us. I want to talk to you about two places that I go in the Bible when I come to these things. It's Philippians 4.8 and Proverbs 16.3. They're the first two places I go when I notice that I'm getting anxious. And I want to give you a, a simple process first, and then we'll come back to those verses. So a process for critical thinking, we might say. So when you have a thought or a fear that won't let you go, you need to catch it. The Bible talks about ca capturing thoughts, doesn't it? And and bringing them before the throne. Well, you want to catch that thing. You want to write it down and you want to put it in front of you. And so what I do is I, I just go ahead and write it down. I'm thinking that nothing good is ever going to happen from this. I'm thinking that I'm a waste of time. There's no good in me trying to do anything. I'm thinking that if I step outside my front door, I'm going to die. I write down that, that thing. Whatever it is that I'm thinking, I just write it down. And remember, God already knows that it's there. And then I ask it three questions. The first question I ask it is, where did you come from? You might find that maybe a, a news clip stirred up anxiety in your heart. Or maybe a memory popped up that brought fear. Maybe you've got a fear that calls out in your head. You know those what ifs. You know, what if this happened? What if that happened? And we let those things spin and dwell, dwell and develop into bigger what ifs than we can even imagine. Or maybe you hear those words always and never. And did you know the majority of things are never always true? We need to watch out for those words because they really are signs of the presence of a lie. With God, there's not anything that's always except for Him. And there's not anything that's never. God will always be there for us. And so these thoughts can come also when you're hungry or when you're tired or because you've had a disagreement with someone or because you're under kind of pressure. 
And you know, we're under those kind of things right now. Again, remember, we all have stray thoughts, so we need to figure out where these things are coming from. If you are dehydrated, you're not drinking enough water, then your mind is open to things like that. Maybe you need some caffeine or some chocolate, something that will lift your spirits. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. You need to think about where did this come from? If I'm hungry, I need to eat. If I have a disagreement, I need to go make that right with someone. If I'm under pressure, then I need to kind of look at my schedule, see what can I do to kind of break that down a little bit and, and give myself some space. I had a Sunday school teacher one time that talked to me about trying to get space to read my Bible and pray. And, and we talked about the fact that nobody in my house, and most of the Sunday school kids were in our class where I grew up, people just didn't do that. They didn't go and read their Bibles and pray that you saw. Um, I know my parents did read their Bible, but I never saw them do it. But her comment was, if you can't get a private place in your house, you know, you can go to the restroom and you can shut the door and nobody will bother you for five to ten minutes. And so when, as a teenager, that's where I used to do my devotions. I would go into the loo. We had a hamper there by the toilet seat. I could sit my Bible up there, read my Bible and pray, and nobody would bother me for just a few minutes. It was a great place. And you know, if you've got a lot of stress inside your home and your family, you might have to find that to be the place that you go to get your sanity back. Anyway, <laughs> sideline. The next question you want to ask it after you ask it where it came from is, are you true? Are you true? This is a very straightforward question, but sometimes with a very confusing answer. It is true that people are dying and have died from this virus. It is true that we have no control over it. It is true, true that we are vulnerable to it. But we really can't leave it there. While these facts are true, we are not in charge of the facts. We can't change them. But we are in charge of our emotions or our reactions. So we want to ask more questions and then we'll get back to those verses. What's the last question? If you believe me, where will you take me? If I let the power of the truth of the facts to overtake me, where will I end up? If I elevate them, what power will they have over me? I don't think we have to dwell very long there before we realize that this is only going to create more anxiety. Thankfully, we have a good option. We can draw on our Lord to help us sort the truth from the lies and bring us back to that place of security and peace. So go with me to Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. And let's quickly walk through this verse. I know you know this verse. I know that this verse is something you've probably heard a million times, you want to say. But that does not diminish the power of God's Word. And I'm going to tell you how I do this. When I get an anxious thought, I write it down like I said. And then I take it through each facet of this verse until it dies. Until I've captured it and it's just, it has no power anymore. So, whatsoever sort of things are, the Bible says, true. Is it true? You know it very may, very well may be true. And okay, that doesn't have to blow my mind. I don't have power over what's going on around me. This virus is a real thing. It's there. That's what it is. But there's lots of true facts in life, and they don't have to knock me down. They are just facts. They only have power as I attach emotional energy to them. Did you hear that? Facts only have power as we attach emotional energy to them. So if I can leave it there and say, is it true? Yeah, it might be true. But that's all that it is. It's just true. Is it honest? Now this isn't asking the same question as, is it true? It means, is the thought noble? Is it respectable? Would an honest person think that way? Sometimes I think of it like this way. When you say to yourself, oh, honestly, come on. That's not, yeah? Honestly, is it really the right way to think? If it's not, then you just need to cast it aside. Is it just? That means is it upright and conform to God's standards? Is it really fair? Is that a really fair way to think? Is it fair about the person I'm thinking about or the situation I'm thinking about? Is it the fair and just way to think about it? Is it pure as opposed to sexually implicit? And we have to watch out under anxiety for these types of things. Or is it something that we want to hide? If it becomes a thought that we want to hide, we need to know that it needs to be exposed to the light of God's Word. Is it lovely? Would I want to hold it up and admire it? Oh, look at my beautiful thought. Is it pleasing to the Lord? Is it of a good report? Would I want everyone to know about it? Is it worth sharing with someone? Is it virtuous? Will it motivate me to do better or to be better? Is there goodness in it? 
Is it worthy of praise? Does it lift up my Lord? Does it cause me to rejoice in Him? I find my strange, annoying thought usually dies somewhere in this verse. Somewhere, because the lies and even truth that derails faith cannot stand up to God's Word and His promises. And once I've taken my thoughts on this journey through Philippians 4a, then I take myself to Proverbs 16 and verse 3. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. There are two keys in this verse. The word commit and the word established. And you will find many verses about committing ourselves to the Lord. Psalm 37, 5, for example, says, Commit thy way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. So committing means to cast ourselves upon, to lay at his feet, or to throw in with. It has the idea of agreeing and working alongside. And I look at it this way. When I commit my work to the Lord, it means I quit trying to do it all by myself. I recognize and agree that He is in charge. He controls my life. I submit myself to His providence and everything I do, I give to Him. And then He promises that my thoughts will be established or controlled. By His power, I can control my thoughts and direct them. I don't have to be random or scattered. I don't have to be fearful or anxious because I know that my path is being directed by the Lord and no matter what comes my way, He is faithful. He is the infinite faithfulness. And I can commit myself to Him. So if you know the Lord, which I'm assuming that you do, then you have His power within you and His word as your sword for the battle. And it might take some serious training, but God has fully equipped you for victory. So take time to study and apply these critical thinking skills for the next few days if anxiety is troubling you. And if you don't have them problem, study anyway, because as we come through this, our people are going to have problems with anxiety, and then you can help someone else. And I'll meet you here again on Thursday, and we'll look at some more at our thought life in this air of anxiety. And then next Monday, we'll put this all together. So, the Lord bless you, watch over you. Ruth Ann and I are praying for you. Take care, dear ones. Bye.